Welcome to Cloud Stories, the podcast about Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure is a comprehensive collection of cloud-based services and features, ranging from infrastructure as a service to platform as a service offerings. Using Azure subscriptions, you can choose which Azure services and features to deploy in the cloud. In order to take advantage of Azure's cloud-based services, you must have a subscription. This episode provides an explanation of Azure Resource Manager structure, the different types of subscriptions that are available, and how you can get a new one. Azure Resource Manager is a unified application model that provides consistent end-user experiences while interacting with the resource providers on the user behalf. The Microsoft Cloud Platform delivers infrastructure as code and platform as code services. These services are referred to as resources in the ARM model. If you're new to Azure Resource Manager, there are some terms you might not be familiar with. Azure Resources are the key to every service offering in Azure. Resources are the smallest building blocks and represent a single technical entity like virtual machines, storage accounts, web apps, databases, and virtual networks. Every resource has to be stored to one specific resource group. A resource group is a container that can hold multiple resources, while a single resource can only exist in one resource group. Resource groups also can't contain another resource group, what leads to a single layer of containers regarding resources. Every resource group belongs to one specific subscription. An Azure subscription has a trust relationship with Azure Active Directory, Azure AD. Multiple subscriptions can trust the same Azure AD directory. Each subscription can only trust a single directory. For Microsoft Azure subscription, the highest level of administration is that of a tenant. Every resource in Azure can be tracked using hierarchy. Resource belongs to a resource group, resource group belongs to subscription, and subscription belongs to tenant. An Azure subscription can be used to separate Azure environments by financial and administration logic. This can be done in many ways, and you can design it to fit your needs. One example would be to have a single tenant at the company level and an Azure subscription for each department. This way you can assign a different administrator to each subscription and keep track of how much each department is spending. To create your first Azure subscription, you need a few things. The first thing is to provide an email address that needs to be either a Microsoft Live account or an Office 365 account. You need to provide a phone number. Finally, you need to provide credit or debit card information along with a billing address. Credit card information is needed even for free subscriptions because Microsoft uses it to verify your identity. When talking about Azure subscriptions, we can divide them into a few main types, pay-as-you-go, enterprise, trial, member offers, like Visual Studio subscriber. The Azure trial offers you $200 of service for 30 days. Subscription will expire whatever comes first, either you spend $200 or it expires at the end of the month. You need to provide credit slash debit card information for this type of subscription. You can convert subscription from a trial to a pay-as-you-go model at any time using that card or by providing details of a new one. If you're a Visual Studio subscriber, you get Azure credits every month that you can use to explore and try Azure services. When you activate your credits, you'll create a new Azure subscription where you can start using them right away. No credit card is required. The amount of Azure credits that you receive depends on the type of Visual Studio subscription you have. When you reach the monthly cap for your credits, your Azure services will stop until your next monthly credits are added unless you choose to remove the spending cap by upgrading to pay-as-you-go pricing. Enterprise subscription requires a contract that determines a minimum amount you will spend on Azure resources. You receive a certain discount for resource prices as you commit that you will be spending a certain amount of money at a yearly level. You are charged on a monthly basis, based on the amount in the contract. Any amount that is over the minimum amount determined in the contract is billed separately at end of the year. With an enterprise subscription, there is also an option to bring your own licenses to Azure, enabling you to reuse existing licenses you have for on-premises resources. Pay-as-you-go is the most simple and most common type of Azure subscription. 
You sign up for an Azure subscription, provide credit card information, and this credit card is used for billing at the end of each month. If you have resources in your subscription, you will be charged only for those resources. If you add some resources, you will be charged additionally. If you delete some of them, you will be charged only for those still active. There is no minimum or maximum limit on your subscription you can spend nothing or millions per month. Let's create a new tenant using GitHub account and start a free trial subscription. To do so go to portal.azure.com and sign in using GitHub account. Authorize Microsoft Corp to your GitHub account. Accept new Microsoft account creation and provide required data. After Azure tenant were created you can activate a trial subscription by clicking the button and providing a billing details. After trial was activated you can create your first resource group. To do so open Azure portal, click in the top left corner and choose resource group section, which will redirect to resource groups blade. Next click add button, specify group's name and location and confirm group creation. As a result, you should see confirmation that group was successfully created. Next time we'll use this group for resource deployment. This was Cloud Stories Podcast. Thanks for listening and have a nice day.